All right, we're continuing on with the before portion of the BDA in working with buyers, and this is the buyer consultation and qualify. Conducting a buyer consultation is so imperative no matter what market you're in. It is your opportunity to educate and qualify the buyer while demonstrating your local market and industry expertise. In a seller's market with little inventory and multiple offers, it's so extremely important to conduct a thorough buyer consultation so that you can establish reasonable expectations and the readiness of the buyer. People sometimes aren't going to believe what it's going to take in a buyer's, in a seller's market rather, of how, many, how competitive they have to be in their offer until you're able to demonstrate it here. They still may not believe you until you actually get out there and do it, but this is the time in the consultation to discuss what's happening in a market, right? And whether it's a buyer's or a seller's market or a neutral market, the consultation is your opportunity to stand out, show your value as their representative. And so we're gonna walk through in this lesson what needs to be in that buyer's consultation, all right? So first of all, choose one or all of these presentation styles. Be ready to have a, a document which we've provided a PowerPoint that you can download from the download section in uh, the overview, lesson one the first lesson and uh, get that or see what your company has to offer, but come up with something so you can stand out professionally in it. And, and a good consultation presentation is like what you would have, think listing. When you go out to talk to a seller, you always have a listing presentation or something that shows what you're gonna do. You need the same thing for a buyer. So you could have a quality print version, something that you can ultimately give to them as well. It could be in a presentation book, good old fashioned document that you down, you know, you print out and, and put into a binder. It could be loaded on your iPad or tablet or device. Uh, or you can present from your laptop or your computer. And as always, we recommend check out Canva.com. We use Canva.com for just about everything that we work on and our coaching company uh, and what we do out as real estate agents ourselves, okay? Use a buyer questionnaire form. We've also provided that for you so you can ask the right questions during the consultation. Confirm the information you might already have when you made that initial connection with the buyer. It could have been months ago. Uh, if you're doing this all at the same time, use this as a guide so you can ask the right questions, uh, all the details around time frame, location, where do they want to purchase, are they using financing or are they going to pay cash and going through the process of what they have to do around that? What's their budget, their price range? What do they want their mortgage payment? Do they have the money for closing costs and a down payment, for example? And then what's their wants and needs specifically? What are they looking for in the home they want to purchase? Beds, baths, garage, lot size, one story, two story. All of that is in the questionnaire. Be prepared to adapt and adjust to any changes that the buyer you know, shares with you. It's so imperative. You must know your buyer's why for purchasing a home. So part of the consultation is going to be digging deeper, building that rapport and trust as you start to talk to people and asking questions. The best way to do is to build rapport and to go deeper. People aren't always going to tell you why they want to purchase until they feel that they can trust you. And that why may come up later as you continue to work with them, even what the deeper why is. But in a great consultation, you can get to that. You're also during the consultation want to explain the home buying process and set expectations, right? So again, use a guide, use a PowerPoint that keeps you prompted on what to talk about next, okay? Uh, in the actual buyer presentation, you wanna have a little bit about you and your experience. Leverage your team of professionals. And even if um, you always have a team, regardless if you have agents working with you, your team includes your broker, your staff, your company, the other business, business professionals you work with for closing, uh, for escrow and title, for um, you know lenders, inspectors, appraisers, the whole nine yards. Are they ready to buy? Some of the things that you can chat about during this presentation, or you may have the lender do this in more detail, but you can get them ready to speak to the loan officer by, ask, by going over these key points like, Hey, you got to have some steady income. You're going to need to be able to have proof of employment if you're getting financing. Talk a little bit about the debt ratios if you're comfortable, the minimum cash for down payments around three and a half percent if it's FHA, for example. Are there down payment assistance programs that they might qualify for? You need to have general knowledge about all of this. Again, the lender will get into the details. But if you're comfortable, you would want to say things like generally a lender wants two months of pay stubs and bank statements, two years tax returns 
they want to see two years with the same company or in generally the same industry. Most programs, the minimum credit score is 580 and that's going to impact your, your uh, overall mortgage interest rate that you get. Uh, and then the le again, bringing the lender in can talk about what they could maybe do to rapid, re you know, rescore their credit and maybe take care of things to get it over 600 and get it into the 620 or 630 or 640 range, for example. The fact that they're going to need one to two percent maybe available funds for the initial deposit, earnest money, closing costs if you can't get the seller to cover that. These are all things that you've got to have a conversation with buyers and or have the lender help explain all that, right? So explaining the process with the lender, why getting qualified and pre-approved right now actually pre-approved when you start looking for homes, how critical that is to show how uh, far along the buyer is in the process and how serious they are and that they're not gonna start the loan process after they find a house that you already have them pre-approved, ready to rock and roll, we just need a house and appraisal, right? So financing basics, programs available, as I mentioned, these are all important things. You know, do you know how to calculate a payment? Do you know how to do that? Uh, do you have an app that could help you with that so you can have this kind of conversation? Again, these are things that will help show the buyer that you really know your field. You are an expert in the industry, including being able to calculate a cost sheet. There are plenty of apps that are out there. Now, you may rely on other professionals to do this, but I we firmly believe that you do need to know how to do this yourself so that you can, if you had to sit down and go, hey, here's what it's gonna generally cost to buy a house right now. You also wanna to talk to them in the consultation process here that you can show them all properties from a variety of sources. So first of all, all available, all available listings in the MLS. You do have to have this conversation. Sometimes people think they need to call the listing agent or they see a sign and they think they have to talk to the listing agent, then they can come back and get you to represent them. So make sure you walk through that whole process of, of agency and procuring cause a little bit without getting too far in the weeds, but you have to help them understand that you're their point of contact. So in the MLS, when they see other agents' listings, as I just mentioned, even if it's online or yard signs, your own office and company listings, obviously, if you have new homes in your area, new construction, you need to definitely include this in your consultation about why we have a whole lesson coming up on new homes and the things that you need to cover. You have to cover why they would wanna have representation at a new home and not just show up without you. The myths that people have about uh, you know, saving commission, if they go without you are just not true. You need to cover all that. You need to talk about the fact that you could represent them if they see a for sale by owner. Trust me, people, you cannot be with your buyers 24 seven. That's why it's great if you can get them an app. They're gonna go out and drive around. So if you at least set the expectations and you have built that rapport that you, you, they wanna work with you, you have to explain all of this, okay? So for sale by owners, you can explain that if they see one to have them call you and that you'll follow up and, and coordinate that to be able to get in and see the for sale by owner and represent them. Uh, you want to maybe talk about, the, especially if you're in a, a low inventory market or more of a seller's market, finding properties that might not be on the market. These are tactics and techniques we use when we are in a very low inventory market where we know what the buyer is looking for and we go market and send letters out to neighbors, uh, to homes that meet their criteria that say, hey, I have a buyer for your home, have you thought about selling? And then I've mentioned it numerous times, get them using your website and or home search app or both. You've got to demonstrate it. You're going to be with them. Get your app on their phone and demonstrate how they can use it and how they can connect with you once they find something in the app that they want to do. Another question, have they purchased homes before? If so, when and where? Don't assume they understand how it works in your area, uh, from state to state, country to country. It's all different. Uh, but you want to get a sense if you're working with a first time home buyer to, you know, a seasoned pro to uh, being able to talk specifically about what might be different in your area. All right, now we're gonna talk about uh, the next part of the presentation, or at some point in the presentation, you've got to talk about what's happening in the current market. What kind of market are you in? Is it a seller's market or a buyer's market? Are you more in a neutral market? Uh, we, using a graphic like what we have here is a great one, or find something similar that generally shows that uh, anything that is under five to six months is generally a seller's market. The neutral is right in that five to seven-ish type of, 
uh, months of inventory is what I mean by that. And then you're in a buyer's market when it's taking longer than six to seven months for a home to generally sell in your area. That becomes the buyer's more in charge. There's plenty of inventory, not enough buyers. Okay, so these things change. You have to be aware of it. You need to talk about that's what's going to change in your consultation, depending on what market you're in. Uh, the sense of urgency in a seller's market is so important to describe, hey, there might be multiple offers, what it's going to take to write our best offer to win. So, you know, use graphics and, and, and use some of the stats and so forth that are happening in your market at the time to help relay this information, right? All right, so we, we know if it's buyers, a seller's or a neutral market. And, and then finally, uh, you want to get into the agency disclosure or it's a great time to at the end here maybe at least get some kind of commitment from the buyer and it could be as easy as whatever your agency disclosure form is which of course is not a binding contract but it does cover what is the requirement for your state or province a buyer brokerage agreement is an awesome thing to do a lot of people are, are uncomfortable doing this because they feel that the buyer is not going to sign it um, but it's something to consider because if you don't really have a great presentation and a commitment from the buyer, then they're working with you and two or three other agents and they're just not telling you, okay? A buyer brokerage agreement can protect you. Uh, you could have some terms in there that allow them, if you, they don't feel like you're doing the job, that you could, they could get out of that. It also protects you if the people are showing open houses, the other agents should be asking, you know, are you in a commitment or binding agreement with anyone else, okay? Um, so consider that. Uh, there's more that you know go specifically to your area your branch manager or office manager broker to learn more about what could what can you use in your area around uh, agent disclosure to a buyer's brokerage agreement all right and then i really recommend that you give them some type of home buying guide okay where it's got more details in there so maybe some of the points that we've just covered but it explains the home buying process what's next provides additional useful information uh, on everything from the process from A to Z, what's going to happen, what they, it, it helps people. People like to be informed. They're going to be online looking at all this, so why don't you be the one that provides them the information? Where you get one, check with your brokerage. Your company may have that. Um, you could take a look at Breakthrough Broker. Breakthrough Broker has a, a lot of great marketing materials for agents, and it, it, there is a free account that allows you to have a limited number of downloads, and then they've gone to a paid model. Uh, also, Keeping Current Matters, um, keepingcurrentmatters.com, excellent source of in, in graphs and charts and about what's happening in the market at, uh, in the U.S. Uh, right now, uh, and that will keep you on track of that as well. All right, so that's it for the buyer's consultation and qualifying the buyer. Join me, uh, and we'll keep moving through the whole buyer process.